Good morning again. Good morning. Our Sunday school lesson for November 5th, 2023, Enlarging Our Vision. Our uh, print, printed text is Acts chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Acts chapter 15, verses 1 through 21 will serve as our background scriptures, passages. And our key verse from Acts 15, verses 8 and 9 and God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Acts 15, verses 8 and 9. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we come to you, Lord God, this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts, thanking you, O God, for this another day. And thanking you, O oh God, for this another blessed opportunity to be in your house of prayer. Lord, we thank you for just waking us this morning, O oh God, and for giving us the breath of life. We thank you, O oh God, that we have the activities of our limbs and our mind that, that's focused on coming to the house of prayer to worship you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for our church family. We thank you, O oh God, for... Uh, this opportunity that continues to be available to all who are willing to come out to learn of you. Many frown still on, on Sunday school, but Lord God, we know that you are our teacher, our leader, and our guide, and we are just followers of you. Amen. And so for the opportunity you give us to learn whatever you'd have us to know uh, from your word, oh God, we thank you. And Lord, as we study this word this morning, we ask you to hide each of us, help us to see in your word what you would have us to know so that we can be doers of your word and not hearers only, deceiving only ourselves. Help us to walk away with at least one nugget of truth to help us live this life better than we were living it before. It's in your precious son's Jesus name we do pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. In most concepts of life, things become at some point or another obsolete and are no longer or do no longer serve the purpose for which they were originally designed. In the case that we are studying, the last two months, I think, of um, our Sunday school lessons have been about the law, recognizing that the law does not save. So the question is then asked, how can we, believers, discern what is obsolete and what is not? Many people uh, stay away from the studying and the reading of the Old Testament in their personal time because in their minds or somewhere along the way, someone has told them that the Old Testament scriptures are obsolete. Um, years ago, I had someone tell me here at Shiloh that they did not want to teach Sunday school because if, the, if, the, if it came up that they had to teach from the Old Testament scriptures, that was going to be a problem for them. So how do we discern what is obsolete? Peter, in our lesson today, rightly assures us that faith in Christ Jesus eliminates the need for this stick to itness of the law, to those, those former laws. Once we have been bought with the price, acknowledge Christ as Savior, we're no longer bound by the laws. We now live a free life in Christ with the assumption that the believer is going to study and grow in Christ Jesus, that the believer is going to commune, spend time with him learning what the scripture says and allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal unto each of us the truth of the matter. Before coming to and growing in Christ, 
Many of us had that same notion that it took something else, uh, mainly because we were influenced by what we saw in order to be saved. We went to church and some thought it was singing in the choir that would, was about, you know, that, that meant I'm saved. Or working in the church, that meant I'm saved. Or trying to just come to church every Sunday without accepting Christ as Savior, believing that that was the way to salvation. And sometimes, even now, sounding like, uh, by, by being repetitive, repeating of spiritual words means to some folk that they're going to be saved. And then you have people that tell people and have a checklist of things that they require, they have come up with based on what they know about salvation. But Jesus tells us, or the word of God tells us in Romans 9, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, works excuse me, lest any man should boast. So as we walk through today's lesson, we must constantly work to cultivate an awareness of the Holy Spirit in the discernment process. We must always rely on, yes, the natural man going to kick in just like that. When someone says something, when we see something, because we're in the flesh. But the believer is to rely on the teaching the revelation of the Holy Spirit to understand the things of God. Even the most dedicated Christian sometimes second guesses their judgments. However, the grace of God will not guide us in the wrong direction. It will show us the right way. Today's lesson outlines Peter's change of heart and mind on the spiritual requirement of circumcision or the need for circumcision. Peter had initially embraced Gentile converts who did not have to meet the circumcision requirement forwarded by the Judaizers, but he later kind of wavered on his belief. As God revealed this error to Peter, you know, that willing, you gotta be willing to hear that you're wrong. You got to be willing to receive that you're wrong. And, and, and the believer has the word of God who confirms when we're wrong. Scripture says in Hebrews that God chastens those he loves. He corrects us. So God corrected him. And when Peter was corrected, he redeemed himself. During the infancy of the early church, some wanted to expose extra, excuse me, impose extra demands on the non-Jewish Christians who confess faith in Christ through the ministries of Peter, Paul, and Barnabas. They wanted them to go back. You, you, you've already been saved. Now you, you got to go back now and be circumcised. As the Gentile believers came to the church, legalistic Jews demanded that these new converts be circumcised. As a result, Fierce arguments about this issue resulted in what they called the First Church Council or the Jerusalem Council. At Jerusalem, the apostles and the elders convened to consider the relationship between Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians, between Moses' law and the gospel of grace. Same stuff still goes on today. It may not look just like that, but you have an old set of believers, and then you got this new age believer. And the old set says, you got to do it this way. 
but that ain't what the word of God says. That's not the understanding of the word of God. However, when that comes up, it causes conflict. And we all know what conflict does. The Bible tells us that a house divided will not stand. So when there's conflict present, there's a problem. And the church has to stand and rectify that situation. The council concluded, based on the Old Testament book of Amos, expounded on by James, the leader of the proceedings, and in light of the experiences of Peter and Paul, that Gentiles were accepted. Further, the council ruled that salvation depended solely on the simple belief in Christ Jesus, not in keeping the law of Moses. If we could keep the law of Moses, there would not have been a need for God to send us his only begotten son. But we could not keep the law, therefore Jesus is the way. That brings us to our printed text, Acts chapter 15, verses 1 through, 5, 1 through 11. Uh, our commentary breaks it down, verses 1 through 5, the debate and verses 6 through 11, saved by grace. May I have a reader or readers, please, for our printed text. A certain man which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. When, Mo when therefore Moses and Barnabas had no small deception and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Bithynia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But, but there rose up certain effects of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth shall hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the heart, bear them with giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. As they. Amen. 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 The debate. The debate. Verses 1 through 5. All right. So a group of men called the Judaizers came from Judea to Antioch, and they held the opinion that Gentiles could not be saved unless they were circumcised. Uh -huh. They had to keep the laws of Moses and be circumcised. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that, that um, the covenant that God made between Abraham and his descendants, um, this, this circumcision was a sign that, of this agreement that was made. And this meant that they were going to obey God in all matters. And it signified the Jews as God's covenant people. Mm -hmm. More than any other practice, circumcision also separated God's people from their pagan neighbors. It identified that these were God's people because they had been circumcised. 
The rite of circumcision did not stop the Gentiles from being saved. Instead, though, it was kind of insisting that the Gentiles had to adhere to the law and had to basically become a Jew before they could be saved. That's, or before we could be saved, because we're Gentile believers, okay? The Judaizers had this mindset, and it led to this rule because in the early days, all believers were Jews. You know, they, 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 they were God's chosen people. They were, of, of, uh, they were like Jesus, and they believed that they were more important, if you will. You know, like some people still do today. And therefore, unless you do it my way, people say, then you are not saved. And that, that's not true. That is, that is not the word of God. That is not fair to impose our system, because that's what it is. It's a personal system. Sure, I would like, you know, for people that I know to do this and this and this and this like me because that makes life easier if we're all doing things, everything, every, everybody doing everything alike, right? It makes it a whole lot easier. However, we're individuals and people are not going to do everything alike. Does that mean that I'm not saved? No. That may mean I need to grow in some areas, but my salvation is not based on that. And, and so we have to be careful because we impose that a lot. We impose that on people, and sometimes we don't even realize that we're doing it, which is why in the beginning I stated we must be in tune with the Holy Spirit's discernment in our lives. He is available to help us even with decisions and and, 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 and and concepts and things that we put on people, you know, e even within our own homes. We have, to be, we have to be careful. We have to be very careful because we don't want anyone to, to think that we are saying that we're in control of their salvation. And that even goes to enabling people. You know, if I'm going to make all the decisions for you, when you going to trust the Holy Spirit? Right. When? When? And the believer ought, ought have the discernment because of the Holy Spirit's presence. That's where discernment comes from. We, he speaks. He helps us. He leads us. He guides us so that we're not putting a yoke on anybody. Not just regarding salvation, but regarding living like a Christian ought. Mm -hmm. According to the word, not according to Avis, for example. <laughs> of course, Paul and Barnabas and some others were not of this same belief. And, and, and many other uh, believers. But the issue was serious. And it could cause... Uh, division even in the church. So they were appointed to go up to Jerusalem mm -hmm. to discuss this concern wisely and carefully. See, everybody can't go. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't have that conversation with somebody. Because somebody got to let you know, because I'm going to say what I want to say when I want to say it, you know, all up at the council or the count, the city meet or whatever. It ain't for everybody. It's not. But we all ought to be praying, and we all ought to be trusting God. This was not what Paul and Barnabas had been teaching to the churches they had visited. On their way to Jerusalem, they paid visits to several congregations, and they established congregations along the way, and this was not what they had been teaching. So rightfully, they needed to be the ones to go and set the record straight. But they didn't go just barge in. They went and they listened. When they arrived, they were received of the church, apostles, and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there arose some of the Pharisees who believed that it was necessary to circumcise them 
and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So the next verses gives the demonstration of what happened while they were there. And there had been much debate about the issue. Peter stood up and said to them, my brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you that I should be the one through whom the Gentiles will hear the message of the good news and become believers. Not our choice. God chooses. Amen. Open to receive what God has for you. Excuse me, but no matter who it comes from, and no matter where you are, it don't matter. If you are a child of God, then you are a child of God wherever you are. Even if you're messing up, you're still a child of God because even wherever you are, God will forgive if you call on his name. He'll hear you. So it doesn't matter where you are. We like to be Christians up over here on Sundays, but nowhere else. We want to hold the people in the church to the checklist, but don't want to hold ourselves to the checklist at the house or over at my cousin's house or wherever I am. We have to be careful about how we display. Everywhere I go, if I'm a Christian, then I am to be Christ-like. Again, it doesn't mean I'm not going to mess up, but my mindset is to do the will of the Father. We're not going to be perfect. And when we mess up, we have to own it. We got to own it. If the Lord reveals it, we have to own it. And sometimes he does reveal it through somebody else. Because you don't want to hear him. You don't want to hear whoever, whoever preaching. You're, I'm just telling mean, It's the truth. Because that's what we do. We don't, want, we, we don't want to, but the word of God, if Angela reads it, it's the word. If Brother George reads it, it's still the word. If Sister Sylvia reads it, it's still the word. If Sister Betty reads it, it's still, it's still the word. And it still comes from God. And sometimes we got to do what we got to do to, you know, to focus. But do what you got to do. Because we got help. <laughs> I'll be honest, sometimes I have to not look. I'm just saying. But I want to hear the word. And I want to hear it because what it speaks to my heart is for me. And, and, and God is sending that to me through that vessel. All I got to do is hear because as it comes, it's translated by the Holy Spirit. See, it might come out of me, but when you hear it, as you place it on your heart, it ought to be the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. The heart that wants to live right. The heart that wants to do right. The heart that wants to give right. The heart that wants to love right. The council. The council. The exact makeup of this council was not what's unknown, the full council, but we do know that Peter, Paul, and James were there and had been summoned to be there. Mm -hmm. It took place in front of the entire congregation. Mm -hmm. The church leaders, the apostles, the elders deliberated and decided on this volatile issue. Mm -hmm. They decided because what they heard from Paul they were convicted. They understood it a little bit better. And God, excuse me, I was reading the scripture. I forgot. Let me go back. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And God, who knows the human heart, testified of them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. That's, what, that, that's how we operate. That's how, that. If he, he spoke it to you, he spoke it to me. You may be a Gentile, I may be something else, but, but, but I received the word of God. Mm -hmm. And in cleansing the hearts by faith, he has made no distinction between them and us. 
the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing on the neck of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. Peter shared his experience of how God had used him to preach to the Gentiles. Specifically, he referred to the incident recorded in the book of Acts when he met Cornelius, and when we first heard of Cornelius, where God had sovereignly led him to share the good news with Cornelius. If the Jerusalem Council took place in about 50 AD, then this was about 10 years earlier. Cornelius, as scripture tells us, was a devout Christian. In, in chapter 10, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw, talking about Cornelius, a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him, saying unto him, Cornelius. Now this is dealing with Peter's understanding and instruction about the, the dif differentiating between the Christians. The Jewish Christians, the Gentile Christians have it to be circumcised, okay? Uh, and when he looked upon him, he was afraid, and he said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up, before, come up for a memorial before God, and now send me into Joppa and call for one, Simon, whose surname is Peter. So he, go, get, go get Simon Peter. He lodges with Simon a tanner whose house is by the sea. He shall tell thee what you should do. And when the angel which spoken to Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto him, he sent them to Joppa. I want to go. I'm not going to read it all. Y'all can go through and read it. But, but basically what is happening is the Lord is revealing to Peter that he is no respecter of persons. Uh -huh. Ju uh, Jews looked at the Gentiles as unclean. Therefore, that's how, that, that's how people thought. Because they're going to do what the majority does, right? But God was preparing Peter for this ministry to Cornelius. He was getting him ready for what's happening in today's uh, text, um, Acts chapter 15. Because now Peter, Peter had to have that experience so that now he could testify to the fact that Gentile believers did not have to be circumcised in order to be a Christian. Okay? Everybody clear on that? Okay. Cornelius is an example of God's willingness to use extraordinary means to reach those who desire to know him. He does not play favorites. In verse 28 of chapter 10, um, excuse me, let me back up, 20, 25, as Peter, and as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet and worshiped him after Peter had experienced his, his vision. And he talked to Peter, <clears throat> he told him to stand up, I myself am also a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together, and he said unto them, Ye know now, you know how, excuse me, that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company, or come, into, come unto one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. God revealed that. And when God reveals unto you, you, you stand steadfast on knowing what he said to you <clears throat> and be open and honest and share that with others because the experiences that I'm having, you having them too. 
The same thing I'm going through, you going through, or you done been through that too. The same revelation he gave to you can help me to grow and to understand to not be judgmental. To, to, to grow and to understand that we move all by the power of God. That there is no separation and there is no respecter of persons in God's eyes. Therefore, we cannot have it. Even if we got to fight through to not have it, we got to do what we have to do in order to be right with Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I'd be so out of breath, y'all. But God. <laughs> Paul, Paul, again, and, and, and when we are operating with these biases, because that's what they are, always remember that it causes confusion for people. And sometimes we're talking to new converts, sometimes we're talking to old who haven't grown, who don't yet understand. You know, nobody is at the same place. Mm -hmm. And there are some matters we don't need to even talk about. We need to take it up with the Lord. Because sometimes it, it just looks, mm -hmm. you know. And he'll silence that thing. Mm -hmm. He gone. Because what you don't want to do is cause confusion among believers. Mm -hmm. The lesson title says enlarging mm -hmm. the vision. Mm -hmm. You 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 got to get to the point. You have to grow to the point where you have that understanding. Because what because causing division, dissension in the body, not just over things like salvation, but anything. Mm -hmm. Causes someone to stumble and we have we have scriptures. We have teachings on that. And so we must be very, very mindful. Um, Galatians 3 and 2 reminds us that the presence of the Spirit of God in them gives us the evidence that we've been accepted by God. I don't get to tell you the Holy Spirit don't live in you. That's not my, that's not my place. But what's true is you know, right? <laughs> And so you have to make a decision mm -hmm. about how you're going to be. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're saved, then he took up residence. Amen. If you're not saved, that's why you ain't got no power and no help. Mm -hmm. And then we're here. The, the, the God is here. Mm -hmm. The opportunity is still available yes. that we can come to him yes. and we gain uh -huh. by coming. Yes. Though it looks like it may look or feel scary in the flesh. We gain a whole family of believers who support, who gonna help, who will walk with us. I tell my children all the time, you don't have you ain't got to be afraid. You don't you really don't have to be afraid. Yeah, we all been there where we've been afraid, but we don't have, you don't have to be. And there are some situations that come up where sometimes we still are, but we can call on him. Because we are all mere men. Yes. We are all mere men. Yes. Ain't nobody in here going to make no mistake. Uh -huh. If you think you ain't, guess what you getting ready to do? Make a mistake. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. That's what the Bible says. Yes. Be careful. Because yes. you in the Bible. Because that's what's going to happen. Mm. So we have, to, we have to understand that this family, no, it's not going to look like... Um, our, our immediate family or our extended family, but it's going to look like family. It should look like family. It ought to look, yeah. you know? Yeah. You know, it should. We should be able to trust each other. We should be able to talk to each other. We should be able, we should be lifting each other up. We should be praying for each other. Yeah. Now, all the world ain't going to do that. That's why I said it. Yeah. And we got some family members that ain't praying for us. You think you think they are if you want to. That's okay. But I'm just telling you the truth. I ain't no fool. I don't believe. I believe. I know they ain't. Everybody don't want to see. Because if everybody not living for the Lord, and if you're living for the Lord, and you have those thoughts, you have help. And he'll bring it on back to you. So the Holy Spirit, this he says, only would I learn of you. 
All we know about Jesus Christ, we learn because the Spirit of God revealed it to us. By the works of the law or by the hearing of faith, he asked. We know by the hearing of faith. Romans 8 and 9, but ye are not in the flesh, you're in the Spirit. If you belong to the Lord. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. And we, we, we battle with that thing, y'all. I know y'all do. I do. We do. It's like, how could they do that? If the Lord lives in them. Guess what that mean? Well, guess what that mean possibly? That he don't. That's what the word said. That's what it what he said. But ye are not in the flesh. Peter warned that by making, I'm back on the scriptures, verse 10 and 11. Peter warned that by making strict adherence to the law a prerequisite for salvation, the church would be guilty of questioning God's way. You think about that for a minute. Questioning God's way. He's already said, Jesus is the way. So when we put any other stipulation, yeah. we're, we're saying, you calling God a liar. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. And he doesn't he want that to be. Doubting. Doubting God's wisdom. Doubting, doubting God's plan. And then arrogantly pursuing a different course of action. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. And there have been some situations we thought that was what was happening, mm -hmm. if we said true. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But you can't think that, and then in the same breath, say God is in control. Because uh, man got away, right? Mm -hmm. That seem is right, mm -hmm. but the end thereof is destruction. Mm -hmm. right. God's way will, prove, pre will prevail. Yeah. It will. Furthermore, the Jewish believers would be putting an unbearable yoke on the Gentiles. We know what the yoke was. Mm -hmm. It was that wooden harness that was used to, for the oxen to pull the wagon. That's right. Heavy. Yeah. He a he heaviness. Uh -huh. A burden yeah. on someone. Yeah. Unnecessary. They coming yeah. to the Lord to be free. And you laying it on them. I know when I was growing up, some stuff you couldn't do, you couldn't wear this, you couldn't wear that, you couldn't. And somebody would say, what that got to do with my salvation? <laughs> you couldn't go to certain churches, we didn't go. We didn't go. If you went, you knew what to wear. And what not to wear, right? But when you think about it, it had absolutely nothing to do with salvation. Nothing. Yeah, presentable. Yes, we should be presentable. Yes, we should be covered. Yes, we should not come up here looking like the world. Yeah, definitely. But it had nothing to do with salvation. Absolutely. Matthew 23 and 4 says, For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. So they say, I ain't even gone help. Is that what it said? Yeah. Not with even one finger. But you want to sit back and watch and checklist somebody else. Concerning their salvation. Yeah. Jesus invited, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Even if someone or some has tried to put a, a burden on you, he says, come to me. And coming to him, we already know that we can be free. That's the only way. And we have to look deeper because there are some burdens that are, have been laid on us. By our ancestors, you know, some folk. Yeah. They have been. Yeah. That we still hold on to. Yeah. That keep us from. Mm -hmm. There are some bold moles. M-O-M-O. 
LDS, that's spell it right. Mold, you know, fit that frame. You got to fit that frame. And if you don't fit it, then you're not. <laughs> Give me my four minutes. If you don't fit it, then you're not. And, and, and some of that has, has framed our mindsets. And it even causes us to reject some of the things that the word of God teaches. Okay. And we're stuck. We can't move. Because we got that stuck. We got that 